Hello and welcome to this last lecture of the course. In this lecture we will do some testing with the cluster configured in ActiveActive and I will also introduce you with uh, an advanced option that it's not available in the graphical user interface so we will change some, th uh, some settings by using the CLI, so the command line. So now I'm logging in, so admin and node password. I should see both 48 firewalls and they are here. The master is 250 priority and I have changed the priority for the slave one, the second one to be 200. So I want it to be different so that there is no election based on serial numbers and other criteria. I want it to be something simple and very easy to, to inspect, to visually inspect. Now, at this moment, I should have ICMP connectivity and I have to, um, to the internet. And to have even more results, we will do like this. So we will introduce two more users on the LAN and I will use now the virtual PC simulator. By keeping the, the shift key pressed down and dragging the node into the, into the topology, you'll have the option to um, basically to insert more than one nodes. So there are two here and I will choose the, the server to run these two VPCs into the GNS3 VM and the second one as well. And here they are. So let's say that I will also change the host name and I will say user2 because we have uh, the LAN PC as user1 and I will say that this one is let's say user3 so user3 and OK now I will connect them so I will use this button add a link click on it select the NIC card only one available but that's that's fine and this one and again the NIC card and the next available port this one we have to power these devices so let's say start and the same for user 3 so start and we will have to configure IP addressing on these two, uh, two new users so right click and go to console and this is the way you do it so again this information is available in the GNS3 free course but I will do it here uh, also so set or no set let's do a question mark so here is what we do configure the current VPC uh, VPC's IP setting so we'll say IP then you can see here IP and question mark so question mark and enter and this is the format the VPCS is expecting. First, it's our IP address slash subnet mask and the default gateway. So I will say IP 192.168.100. Let's say this one is 50. The Windows PC it's 100. So this one, let's say it's 50 slash 24. And now the default gateway, it's 192.168.100.254. It's checking for duplicate address and now let's test connectivity to the internet and it's working and let's do the same for user 3 so console IP 192.168.100. Let's say this one is 150 slash 24 and the gateway 192.168.100.254 checking again for duplicate address on the wire on the LAN and it's applied let's say ping 8.8.8.8 perfect so we have connectivity so this is what uh, I will do so I will leave this one here and let's say also the second one so user 2 this one here and ping 8.8.8.8.8 I will do minus C and I will send like a thousand packets. I will do the same on this one. So ping 8.8.8.8 minus C and a thousand packets. And I will initiate a ping as well as well from the Windows PC. Good. Now we have everything uh, up and running and prepared for testing. 
So let's see how I can do it. Okay. Now I will go to the Genius 3 and power off the first machine. And the result is that this one should, uh, the second 40A should become master. And hopefully we will see very few, little to, to, to none packets uh, dropped. So let's do it. So I will extend the session. I will leave it uh, like this and just say stop. So let's see. One packet dropped. Two packets dropped. Here two, here two, and the failover has been uh, has been propagated. Here I've seen only one packet dropped. If I now log in to the same IP address again, two five four, it should say, "Yep, that's forty eight two. So forty eight two is the only one master. It's the only one active now. Uh, so let's do it like this now. We've seen it work. We've seen that." only few packets have been dropped in the vpcs two packets in the windows pc only one i will now power again the 48-1 and hopefully it will become master right so let's see if this happens so no packets dropped until now let's also take a look here so yeah no packets dropped Let's wait for the 48 firewall, the 48 one to, to boot. I will do a refresh here. And here they are. Well, if it if it's not a surprise for you, here you can see that 48 two it's master and it has a priority of 200, 250 for the second one, 48 dash one. It's in the cluster now, but it's slave. Configuration, as you can see with the green tick, it's synchronized. So how come we have priority 200 and priority 250 and the higher priority, it's slave? Um, that's a good question, right? So let's take a look now into the CLI and see basically what's the reasoning behind this. So why did it, uh, did it not elect again 48.1 as the master? So if you want to look for the for the information, not the running configuration, but the current status, you would say get system HA status, enter, and look here. So this serial number, meaning 48-2, is selected as, as the master because it has the largest value of uptime. Okay, so if you want the cluster to renegotiate again to renegotiate the master role we would have to do some configuration so basically when the master uh is um so when the when the 48 one comes back online again it should re uh i don't know re-elect itself as master because it has the larger priority and let's see show system ha so we are now looking at the configuration not the current status and here we have this option set override as disable override meaning okay i have the the bigger priority i want when i come back online to become master again so let's change this and say configure system ha set override question mark enable or disable it's now disabled i will enable it enable and end show system ha now it says set override enable perfect so let's get back again to the user one anyway user two and user three have still connectivity i will again this time i will uh, let's see how we do it i will power off again this one so 48-1 at this moment 48-2 we have seen it as being master so if I go to Windows 10 and choose the first one, I will say refresh. We have now 48.2 with 200 priority. It's the master. Going to the Genesis 3, I see 48.1 powered off. I will power it back on. So start. 48.1, it's starting. No packet drops here. And 
let's go to the graphical user interface and do some refresh until 48-1 comes back online. And we can see now that 48.2 is still is still the master has a priority of 200. This one is 250. It shows as master, and 48.1 with 250 it shows as slave. So let's look at the configuration again. So extend session of uh, 48.1 and 48.2. So 48.1 it's not responding. So I will open a new console or 48.1 console and let's say admin show system show system ha it says set override as disabled that's why it didn't trigger again so the uh, the master re-election so config system ha set override as enable and Check again the configuration. So show system HA. HA it says set override enable. Let's also check the 48 2. So console admin show system HA set override enable. Perfect. Let's do the test again. And probably, I mean, this time it should work because this is what uh, this option override does. So again, I will stop it because now 48.2, it's the master at this moment. Um, it shouldn't do any 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 trouble to, to the traffic. We've seen two packets here. Let's go and take a look in this one, only one. So the pattern is the same. Logging back in, admin, we should see 48.2. Perfect. And now I will go again and 48.1 will get some power. So start. 48.1 it's starting. Let's have a look on the user 2, 3 and see if any packets dropped uh, are detected. Nothing yet. Let's take a look on the graphical user interface. Refresh. Nothing yet. So I believe this is the moment where basically the HA uh, failover has been done. Let's log in again, admin. Now I'm I am on 481 and look here. So 481 with a 250 priority is now the master. 482 it's now the slave as I have mentioned in a previous lecture There are options that are not available in the graphical user interface and uh, you'd have to use the the CLI So this is um, basically how it works in active active or active passive It's not that hard to, to configure but as you have seen there are uh, some some necessary steps you have to go through and I hope that uh, this course uh, you'll find as useful and use all the information on, uh, on this course to practice on your own laptop so that you can master the topics and uh, become a better engineer. So I'd like to thank you and see you in an upcoming course.